All right, welcome back. This is part two of me reacting to my very first video on how to overcome stuttering. If you haven't watched the first one, I'd highly recommend watching that right now. So you can see the first six minutes and 11 seconds to what I'm talking about and hearing how I changed, how I talked about it, how I dressed it and my mentality to it now is different. Let's watch the second part of this and finish this up, all right? Let's go. It's, those things are so heavy that once you pick up the 20 pound weight, so right now what I'm explaining is the, the thing I said, the one thing you need to do to overcome stuttering. And this is about pushing yourself outside your comfort zone, getting more anxiety, getting more fear, getting more embarrassment. And it's about getting it at, at a higher scale. So lifting heavier weights. So let's actually just go back a little bit. So the realization that I had here it is. It's those feelings, helplessness, embarrassment, stress, anxiety. If there is a way for me to get more embarrassment, more anxiety, more stress, then that, those feelings I have when I stutter will feel a lot less. It, like, Deep inside, when I stutter in front of someone, I won't feel as embarrassed because I just did something more embarrassing. Do you know what I'm saying? Say you're lifting 10 pound weights. So what I'm referring to is like, if I go and do something that gets me a lot of embarrassment, say when I stutter in front of a stranger on a scale of one to 10 of how embarrassed I feel, I feel like a seven or a six, I say a six. If I go and do something right before that, like laying down in public or doing push-ups in public or something like that, it brings my embarrassment to a seven or eight. It's going to make the six now seem like a three. It's going to make the six seem like nothing because I just did something more embarrassing. And when the six, when the six went down to a three and it doesn't arise the same amount of embarrassment, if you stutter, then you don't need the same amount of anxiety to, pre to prepare you for that. You don't need the same amount of fear to an anticipation of what's happening to prepare you for that. You only have the fear and anxiety when the outcome can grant you a lot of negative emotions, embarrassment, fear, anxiety, what the fuck was saying? Um, shame, embarrassment, um, feeling in fear, inferior, like all the results that can come from a stutter, same with more anxiety and stuff like that. Um, you won't, when those outcomes aren't as prevalent, when you don't think those are going to be as severe, then you don't have the same amount of anxiety and fear before that, meaning you won't stutter as much because the tension isn't getting stored inside of you like it used to. That's what I'm explaining here. So you're lifting 20 pound weights. They feel pretty heavy, right? They feel pretty heavy. But as soon as you start lifting 50 pound weights, those things are so heavy that once you pick up the 20 pound weights again, they feel a lot lighter than they did before. Do you get what I'm saying? So what I did are called comfort zone challenges. And they're a way to make you not give a sh but what other people think of you. I love how I used to cut out the swear words. You'll feel a lot more embarrassed in the moment. You'll feel a lot more stress in the moment than what you do, than what you feel when you stutter. So when you... You, you can almost still see the stress in my face while I, while I was speaking. If you go back, 10 seconds, you can see here it's like stressed. As I'm speaking, more embarrassed in the moment, you feel a lot more stress in the moment than what you. I don't know if that's just because it was bright out, not a kind of squint, or if what that could have been from. Do than what you feel when you stutter. So when you stutter in front of somebody, you won't have the same amount 
of negative feelings as you did before you did the comfort zone challenge. Doing these comfort zone challenges makes you not just overcome your st- but one, it makes you overcome one of the biggest flaws everyone has. And that is caring what other people think of them. And that is like one of the biggest reasons why you stutter so much around new people, around people that you value higher than others, because you care about their opinion of you more than your dog. You care more. More than your dog. More than you think your dog. Hmm. More than you care about the opinion of your dog. So again, that's still so fucking true. Is based upon the value you give other people's opinions of you. If you value someone's judgments of you or opinions of you up here, way the fuck up here, way on this pedestal, that automatically means you value your shit below them. When you put them on a pedestal, that makes you down here because you don't raise yourself up with it. You don't, you don't say anything about yourself. It makes the contrast in what they think of you and what you can think of yourself different. So when it's a huge contrast, you will do everything in your power to not get a negative judgment from that person. Because what happens is if they have more power on you and they judge you negatively, it's going to make you feel negative about yourself because you put them on a pedestal. It doesn't happen when it's like this. It doesn't happen when it's like this. It's only when you give them more power. So of course you're going to try to avoid judgment. Of course you're going to try to please them and be perfect around them to show them this perfect version of yourself because you value them so fucking highly. But what happens when that, when that, when you're trying to prove and please and pretend and perfect around them, you care way the fuck too much about what they think of you. You are going to stutter so fucking much because that's when you're the most inauthentic. That's when you have the most tension in your body. That's when you have the most anxiety. That's when you're anticipating the most. That's when you're the most in your head. You will not be able to express yourself naturally and effortlessly with flow if the pedestal is like this. So stop caring so much about what other people fucking think of you. That's what I was trying to say. All right. Comfort zone challenges kills many birds with one stone. though. Like it doesn't just cure your stutter. It also regains that self-love that you've lost through the years of stuttering and hating yourself, which you shouldn't at all. You're, you're amazing. It regains a self-love. It makes you more outgoing. It makes you want to talk to people. It makes you want to live life. Because of judgment that you feel from other people is gone. You can do whatever you want to do. This world is literally yours to bend over and implement anything you want to do in it. Don't let your stutter hold you back anymore. It's so free. So the more you can lessen over time how much you care about what people think of you, the better your stutter your stutter your stutter will become. Still very true. And doing these comfort zone challenges, man, woman, are the fastest way to overcome that anxiety. Yeah, so doing the comfort zone challenges and purposely going out to get judgment, anxiety, fear, doubt, shame, and desensitizing yourself to such a high level of it is the fastest way to stop caring about what other people think of you. You, you, There's no other choice but for you to stop caring. If you continue caring with the same amount of care you've had these past few years, like you wouldn't be able to do the 
challenges. There's no other way but to just stop caring while you're doing these challenges because you get desensitized to such a high level of stress and anxiety. And you're always safe. You're not going to die. The worst case scenario is someone talks to you. That's it. And um, it's such a safe way to address these fears. That stress, that everything that comes with stuttering. Other than hiding those emotions, saying you don't have them. That makes it so much worse. Embrace those emotions. Feel those emotions. And over time, those emotions will just lessen. The feeling of judgment will lessen. When you stutter, you won't care anymore. So, have you realized when you stutter, the more you care about trying to get a fluent speech, the more you stutter? You won't care if your speech is messed up, even though it will not be, it will be saved by this. You won't care anymore. You won't care if you stutter. You can stutter all you want. You won't feel embarrassed because you just did. You just laid down in front of a hundred people on the sidewalk for a minute. Like how ridiculous does that look? And now to stutter in front of someone, to mess up a few words, that's nothing. <laughs> Do you see how sick this is? This is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> it's so cool. And something else I did, I just yell. I bark in public places as you see people around me. People walk on those trails. What? Do that, that stuff in malls. Do that stuff in streets. Your stutter, stutter. What's up with that word? Your stutter will be okay. <laughs> this shit gets me hyped up. Honestly, holy fuck! Right now. And now I just show an example. I actually forgot I had this video. I remember I walked up. I remember I walked up to a random girl that was sitting down and asked her to film me laying down on the floor. And this is some. This is something of like a comfort zone challenge. Getting more judgment. Getting more embarrassment. Getting more shame than what happens when you stutter. And um, after I go to speak, I go to speak after I do this. What is there to be anxious about? What is there to be fearful about? Nothing. I just got judged. I just got looked at. Look at that guy. He's like, what the fuck's he doing? I think he looks back again. I stutters nothing after you do something like this. Gives you complete freedom. Freedom of expression. Freedom of... Ah, just whatever the fuck you want to do. I love how the girl is like zoom, zooming in. Um, she was such a good photographer. <laughs> I wonder what's going through her mind. Uh, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, nice. And you see where I did that comfort zone challenge? It wasn't the busiest place. It was in a packed mall. But it's the most populated mall in the city I'm in right now. <laughs> so I got to get something out for you guys. As quickly as possible. But even to... Uh, Even to start, you can just lay down in like a park like this, where True. only a few people will see you. Or you can just do push-ups there, or you can stand with your hands above your head. Anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, no matter how difficult it is, as long as you're feeling uncomfortable, and as long as you're moving forward, that's all that matters. The moment that you stop, the moment that you stop trying, start, stop moving forward, stay still. That's the moment that you lose yourself. Now I forgot to add, I'll just do it right quickly, is how often you should do these comfort zone challenges. And it's at least once a day. Okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna end this here. Let me um, I actually put an end to it. And let's quickly just talk about it. Like, um, at least once a day, I 
I would say whenever you feel fucking stifled, whenever you feel anxious, if you can do something to push yourself out of this anxious state, if you can do something to change that pattern where you feel anxious and withheld and you usually then repress and shut down and don't speak, now you feel anxious and withheld, you fucking change that pattern so that you go and push yourself, you go and get judgment, you go and get embarrassment, so then you realize it's safe and you desensitize yourself to that, which will then change the way you express yourself, which will then make you more expressive, which will then make you feel safer in talking and in interactions and in walking and in getting looks at you, will make you feel safer. And that's how you change that fucking pattern is when you feel the anxiety and the stress and you want to hold back, but you fucking do something to change it. I'm get, I'm like getting back my old fucking hypeness just by watching that, vi that video. It's crazy. Um, you change something to interrupt that pattern so you stop putting such a pattern to that pattern because that's how, that's how you got developed right now is just through a series of patterns through a series of habits. All you have to do now is change those patterns for enough time where they rewrite and over, override your old habitual repressive way of being to a more expressive way of being. Doing it over and over, addressing that fear, addressing that anxiety is how you do it with small challenges like that. And like I said in video one, this is definitely not like the only thing you need because as I said in video one also I I had the worst relapse of my life like a week after or even a few days after I filmed this so clearly it wasn't just the challenges that I needed to do it was a lot of mindset work it was a lot of letting go it was a lot of learning to not resist your emotions and learning to, to yeah let go of these emotions and let go of traumas and let go of comparison and there's a lot of other shit I had to deal with but this was the very start of it and I wouldn't have changed it. I would have went straight to action, pushing myself and leaving my comfort zone like I did. Okay, but now I have a way better grasp of it. Now I'm in a stage where I would say I haven't lost control of my speech for, I don't know, two years now. Like it's been com complete, complete, there's no need to fear it. There's no need to fear the stutter. I feel completely safe to stutter. When I stutter, it just opens me up. It makes me more vulnerable. It makes me more me. It makes me more true and authentic. There's no need to resist it. And when you're in that mindset and you don't need to resist it, you are no longer gonna make it persist. It's only what you resist persists. So if you get in the habitual way of not resisting it, you will see there's nothing to fear about your stutter and it just stops persisting. And even though I still stutter from time to time, it doesn't put me into those states where I feel less than other people and I lose control. I'm, I'm, I'm always chill with it. It doesn't matter when it comes up. That's the state, the goal state you wanna be in. And if you want help with that, and if you wanna be in this state as, as well, then you can click on the closest link down below in the description you can book your free one-on-one -on -one call with me. We'll hop on a call. We'll analyze your situation, see where you're at, see where you want to go, and see if working with me will grant you the results that you want to grant, that you want in your life, okay? If it is, if you're interested, click that closest link down below in the description and book your free one-on-one -on -one call with me, okay? That's it. I love you. I hope you enjoyed this part one and part two because I did, even though it's a little cringy at times. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video.